at NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. With an NES. The Shuttle Engineering Simulator. Which, if you don't know, is actually the original Kobayashi Maru, which is from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Well, I never heard of that before, but the actual simulator is right behind us, and we're going to have a chance to land the space shuttle. Yes, and I'll make sure you see the movie. Let's go. Right, let's go. How is this flight simulator different from a, a normal flight simulator? Besides the fact that I have no control. Well, here at NASA, most of our simulators we're using to train the astronauts on different systems. This one we mostly use for the guidance, navigation, and control engineers to look at new procedures, design new flight software, test out new displays. So it's an engineering simulator. So this cockpit display is, is identical to what you would see on a, on a regular shuttle? It looks pretty close to the real thing. Oh, cool. So what do you have lined up for us today? Well, today we're going to fly an entry. Um, we're going to uh, do an abort entry, actually, into one of our East Coast abort landing sites at okay. Oceana. So we're gonna Virginia Beach. Hey, that's, 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 that's where we're Flying you guys home. Actually, the simulation that we use upstairs, we use at our desktops as well. And that allows us to run much faster than having the crew actually sitting and flying the entire landing. So we can do much more analysis. In fact, let's do some analysis on how well Chris is going to do. We'll go ahead and start it up. We'll start at 50,000 feet. Okay, yeah. And um, we're actually going to come left around the heading alignment circle on this run. Okay. So. And of course, my job will be watching the, al uh, the altitude and arming and lowering the landing gear. And of course, deploying the uh, drag chute during landing. I think that's enough for him for one launch, right? It's for an important landing. job, but... Hey, I've got a job, and I'm happy to do it. There's a lot of displays. There's nine displays uh, down low with a lot of information for the crew, but they put the important ones for landing on a heads-up display, though. Okay. So and your speed. altitude and speed, uh, you can see. So as the commander, I mean, I've got to be able to multitask and look at all these different... Right, and Boy. there's so many jobs, that's why I'm going to take care of the landing gear, right? Blair has the highly important job of deploying the landing you gear. You can't land without landing You're right, gear. you're right. Yeah. Okay. All right, Blair, don't I'm, do me wrong. I, I won't. I'm watching your altitude, by now, the way. I notice I'm at 242 miles an hour, 0.9 Gs, uh, roughly a little less than 40,000 feet, and I'm starting to... More like 39,000. Come around Black, about 270 degrees and line up with the, the runway. Right. Right. So I need to get this rectangular box in center with the diamond. Yep. Guidance is guidance is telling you where to fly to. You just have Perfect. to make the vehicle. Trust your feelings, Chris. Use the force. You're not helping, Blair. You're at 30,000 feet. This is very stressful. We look with at no the, engines. We look at the vertical situation display, and you're coming okay. in on energy, so everything's looking good. Okay. For this landing. I think I could see the airport. Now, I'm really focusing on this heads-up display. I guess I should be looking all around. There's a lot of other cues, especially, say, if it's a cloudy day, um, right. other things. There's a lot of cues on these different displays that tell you um, how you're supposed to be flying. It does take a lot of training, though. They, they run a lot of runs in their motion-based simulator, and they run a lot of runs on the shuttle training aircraft, too. So We got a good visual on the uh, airstrip, and that does look uh, like Oceana, so that's a good sign. 3,000, we're arming the landing gear. Okay, oh, wrap it, Chris. We're uh, coming in pretty quickly. We're under 1,000, and I'm lowering the gear. for shoot deployment. Shoot is deployed. That should slow us down. And you rotate the nose. And there we go. Hit the brakes. Looks pretty good. Look at that. Wow. Nice job. So where? What'd you think of that landing? Good job, Chris. Not Perfect. bad. Perfect landing, isn't it? Yeah. Not bad for a media knot. So what kind of grade would you give me on this one? Um, crew safe here. we got wheel stop, so I think that's an A for safety here. Oh, that, that's perfect. Now, we've landed in Oceana, Virginia Beach. Virginia, we have all this data. Where do you, where do you go from there? One of the things that we want is to have the crew um, evaluate the landing sites. And so all these abort sites that they might have to fly to, they might need to add uh, new, different visual cues out right. there so the crew can give feedback on okay. those types of things. 
Chris, I tell you what, uh, since we had our first successful landing, could you take it up a notch? Maybe add some clouds and some crosswinds? Okay, yeah. you're, you're ready for yeah. the big time here. Ready okay, for round we'll, two. We'll add He's some clouds. Cool. Would you still um, drop the gear at 300 feet with clouds? Oh, I would think so. You, re you ready, Blair? We yeah, have to uh, make okay. sure you hit the, let's yeah. get the landing gear. Yeah. Okay, well, I can handle it then. It's, this is no Kobayashi Maru. Okay, well, let's go. I'm ready. Actually, we vary quite a bit of different parameters. And we randomly disperse them in what's called Monte Carlo technique, where we can look at thousands of different runs by running on a desktop machine. Hey, look, Chris, zero G. It's just like Apollo 13. Mm. Must save ship.